Welcome everybody to Granny J. Clay. This is Joni. I'm going to do a, a quick video here to show you uh, my technique that I had used for these beads. I made a, uh, just a really quick video yesterday to show you, but um, this is the mold that I used. It's from Sculpey. And if you don't have this mold, <clears throat> well, you can always order it. I think they're like $9.99 or something from Sculpey. But if you don't have something at home to use, you could use maybe the, people have used pop cans before where they have cut a pop can off and used the bottom of the pop can. And you could invert it and try that, but I, it may have some bumps on it, so you may not want it. You want it to be smooth. So what I've done is I, ta I took some of my old clay and I sque squeezed it together. I don't want to run it through the pasta machine. I want to keep the pretty colors like this so we have a, a nice design. Um, like these, like the um, the ones I have yet to finish. And so I'm going to pop that out now, and that's what that looks like. Now I will bake that at um, 275 for a full hour, but I'm going to make a bunch more before I do that. However, since I have already done some, I'm going to uh, take one of my beads and show you what happens when I uh, buff and shine them. So you bake them, you bring them out, you let them cool, and then here is my, my buffer. It's a Fordham buffer, uh, F-O-R-E-D-O-M, and you can sand things with it too, but I put the end on that buffs. Here's the buffer. And so I'm going to, um, that's what makes them shiny, that plus the wax that I use. Here's the wax that I use um, to do that with. It's called Renaissance renaissance wax i already opened it up so it's ready to go i poke my finger in there and i've got um, one of those blue things and i just uh, blue beads and you rub on excuse me you rub on the the wax i had already buffed this just a little bit already once and so it started to really get shiny already let me just show you i'm going to turn this on and buff for a little bit and i turn it about halfway um, I started out very slow until I got used to the machine, and then I now I go about halfway with it, and it's not very loud at all. So you you decide whether you think it's loud. So let me show you what you do, and you got to hold on to it top, uh, the top and the bottom, and put a finger in the back of it. Otherwise, it's going to shoot out of your hands, and it may do that for me now. Once in a while, it just does it, um, and I've got a bad crack on this thumb today, so it's crazy. Anyway. Uh, here we go. I'm rubbing it up, and all you do is you just hold it like this, and very lightly. I mean, you don't have to push on it really very much at all to get it to, to buff it up. See that shine? Okay. I ordered this buffer Oh gosh, many, many years ago. So I'm not, I really don't know how much they cost. But this is really nice if you have a very flat bead with not much texture on it. And you can just buff it, buff it, buff it, buff it, buff it. And it's starting to really look nice. I'll show you in just a second. Let me just do a little bit more. You just, just hold it lightly. Now let me show you the difference. Do you see that? Do you see how it's getting to, to be really nice and shiny? This one doesn't shine like that, but this one, yes, it does. And um, I do have some texture on the back of this one. I still could rub wax on it and shine that up, so I'm going to try just a little bit. We'll see how this does. This, this will be my first try with trying to do it with texture. Let's see how it, how it works. Should work just fine. not to get my thumb under there it'll grab my finger cut that I've got on. You can always slow it down and I would suggest that you do start slow. Oh yeah it's really shiny. Okay I don't know if you I'm going to show you and see if you can see the shine on, on this. Oops here we go turn this off just for a second. You see it? But that's what I did. I, that is what I did. I'm going to shine this up some more when we're done. But that's what I did to get this beautiful shine on these beads. 
Now, I have an idea for what I'm going to do with these. Um, I had to order something, though, before I do something with them. Um, but they're just beautiful. You don't need to put any lacquer on them at all. You don't need to spray them. You don't need to put resin on them. Um, and, you know, uh, these pearl essence beads really <laughs> shine up pretty. Well, they all do. But, um, and I think they all are very, very pretty. But um, those especially, I think, look lovely if they have a little pearl essence inside the clay. So that was that. I wanted to show you that to make sure you knew what it was. Let me just bring this back in so you can see the name. There it is, Fordham, F-O-R-E-D-O-M. And this is where you turn it up and turn it down. And I, I go almost, not quite, to the half mark um, to do that. I think I wouldn't have as good a control if I turned it way up. In fact, I know I wouldn't, and I'm not going to even try that. So so I just wanted to show you that for sure, but I wanted to show you one other thing as well. I'm going to bring out some scrap clay here. And remember the beads, um, the picture of the beads that I made? These are the two beads that I made. Well, now I'm going to take a piece of this, and I am going to run it through the pasta machine so I can show you how to make one of my one of my tube beads. And they all have s different texture. Some are twisted, some are not. Some are small, some are big. So there's big holes, uh, smaller holes. And of course on the little one there's even a smaller hole. And what you want to do is to run that over a piece of sandpaper and get it even. So, because when you cut it off, when you're making it, um, yeah, they get a little uneven. So let me just show you. I'm going to bring out, uh, well, first of all, let me first do this. Just going to run a little bit of this um, clay. Not pretty. <laughs> okay, I'm going to run a little bit of the clay through the pasta machine on my widest setting, which is zero. Now I'm going on a one. Okay, so that's what it looks like, but it's still a little bit, I'm afraid it would fall apart if I started to do what I wanted to do with it. Okay, I didn't want it that way. I'm going to go back this way. I'm going to run it through on a one. And on this, I don't really mind. I ran it on a two as well. I don't mind if it blends a little bit more. It's, pre it's still pretty. And so what I'm going to show you to do is this. Uh, uh, uh. I'm going to get one of my sticks out. Let's see if I can find one here. Yeah. I'm going to cut this straight across. Um, like that, like that. And I'll just cut some of that off too. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, use my cornstarch. There you go. And I'm going to dip my finger in it, and I'm going to just rub it along my stick, like this. And make sure my stick has a little bit of that on it. Okay. Then I'm going to take this, and I'm going to roll it up. Roll, 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 roll. And when I feel like I have met this side with that side, I'm going to cut it off. Okay, let's see what I've got. It's overlapping a little bit, but that's okay. Now I'm just going to press it down. Okay, and then I'm going to hold on to it lightly, hold on to the tube lightly, and just move this back and forth to make sure it's movable. Okay, and I'm going to put the seam down, and I'm going to roll it a little bit. Press it down. Okay, there you go. Now you're going to see that the ends might be a little bit different, and that's fine. I always trim those off later. Now I want to show you how to make some ridges, if you want to, like this or this. And th this is just a, a pile of scrap clay that I keep up in front of me, and I add to add to it when I there's little pieces I don't want to work with. So I'm going to bring it up here, and I'm going to get it up off my board or my glass. 
and then very lightly, easy hand, twist it again, make sure it's loose. Um, and when you rub it across this, you're going to find that it's going to um, loosen away from your stick a little bit. But just go like this, and you wanna hold lightly so that when it goes across, you're not holding it tight, you want it to roll. Now let me show you what I mean, like this. See? I have to, see, I can't see it from more, my vantage point. And you see it made a mark, didn't it? Now we're gonna go back this way, go up a little bit, and we're gonna roll again. And then we're gonna come this way and roll again. You could actually come back this way too if you wanted to. Okay, let's come back this way once. Okay, now you can see that there's a nice texture on it. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it sideways, sort of, kind of at an angle. A little bit like that, a little bit like that, a little bit like that, and like that. And you can see now we have even more texture. You see that? And it's still loose. Obviously, it's falling back and forth. Now, if you wanted this bead to be a little bit fatter, take your piece of clay and push in like that. You see? And that is, is going to even give you... Oh, do you see that seam pop up? Just work with it. Take it back down and just give yourself some more texture over it very lightly. And I'm going to trim that off in a minute, but I'm going to make the hole a little bit smaller too. So you can do whatever you want to do. Now I'm gonna twist it just a little bit to give it a little bit more. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted. So if you can see that, there's a twist to it, and you pushed it in together. And I don't think I'm gonna to need to cut anything. Sometimes I trim off here on the ends. Make sure it's moving, it's still moving. So it's ready for the oven now. Now when it comes back out of the oven, you see it's a little bit uneven. All you have to do is rub on your sandpaper on both ends. Or you could, you can trim it right now. You can just take your blade and trim around it on the stick if you'd like. But, um, so there's plenty of room there if you want that large of a hole. And I do have smaller sticks that I use. I even have used a toothpick to get a smaller one. So you can do it as you like. Now I'm going to show you a different technique, which you really have done before, or I've showed you before. Let me show you again. However, isn't that pretty? You cut it, just push it together, and it really keeps some pretty lines in there, pretty pattern. All right, I'm gonna run it through my POS machine on a zero, then on a one, then on a two. Now, I'm gonna take a look at it, and it has some lines of blue in there. That's pretty, that's real pretty. Okay, and I want to see if I think that um, it will hold together. I think it will. Now I'm going to pick this up off of here, and I'm going to roll this across and get texture that way. Okay? Now, you can do it either way, but I, my, my problem has been when I put it back on here and I want to, um, let's see here, let's just cut it off a little bit. Make sure I've got a little bit more of my cornstarch on here. Okay. Okay, let me just take it and do it this way. And the lines are going horizontal. You see? So you, you do have texture there, but Whenever I would push this down, I'd lose the texture. So I figured out this way to do it. So I'm, I'm still going to push it down just a little bit. Just roll it a little bit. But I just wanted to show you that there is a way to get past that. You know, where there's a will, there's a way. Um, okay. Now make sure it's still loose. Yes, it is. And you can even get smaller ones. I got this one. And um, the lines would be smaller, so let's one, let's try that one once. Okay. And there's a little clay on that, so I'm going to take this and roll it again. So remember, loose-handedly, <laughs> very loosely. Do you see how it's split? 
push it back together and push it back together okay now we're going to come back up again and you know what if your clay was a little thicker it probably wouldn't do that as easily okay And you see how it's gotten wider on this end? And it's, it is coming apart a little bit. So I'm just going to play with it. Then we're going to go back and roll it again. I'm just going to do it. Make sure it's still loose on the stick. I don't care if I mess up the texture because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it again. I think this needed to be conditioned still a little bit more. But that's okay. You get the idea. Okay. And then you roll it. And you roll it, and you roll it, and you roll it, and you roll it, or you can go back and forth, back and forth. Be sure you condition your clay really well. And then again, you can go sideways if you want to, or you can find something else that you want to um, put out here to roll it on as well. Do you remember the little, let me see if I can get this out. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the little pieces that I made? That you can press into the clay if you're making some uh, little square beads. These, and they got clay on them a little bit. You could also use these very easily if you wanted to prop this up like this. You could just prop it up like, let's see, is that big enough? Yeah, just prop it up like that if you wanted to. And then you could roll. And you could even turn it and then roll it the other way if you wanted to. And that's what I did with some of these. And then if you want a shape, all you have to do is take... Um, I took a coffee cup that had a, a rather small bottom. And I took my bead uh, while it was still raw clay. And I, I formed it around the coffee cup, cup after I did this to it. After I twisted it and kind of pushed it together. Okay. Now another thing you can do if, um, let's say you have some black paint that you, you wanted to put uh, something on the end that looks like an end cap, and I've done this before. You, you could just take like the lid of something and put some black paint in there. And then all you do is you take your bead and dip it. And it, it'll come up maybe, not a half an inch, but maybe a fourth of an inch, maybe not even that high. And then you turn it around and dip it, just be sure you don't touch the other end because it's still wet and then figure out a way you know you could use some clay just prop it on some clay like that some raw clay to let it dry so there we go anyway some little hints and things there I guess but I wanted to show you that too today in case you were wondering how how I made these beads but whenever you do it uh, make sure that the clay is uh, conditioned well enough so it doesn't like this was not um, and it felt was a little bit hard to work with it kind of fell apart but you can get it so it will do this and I like these little stubby ones so when you get a long one on the stick you just press it together bring it together bring it together and then twist a little bit and twist a little bit and you'll come up with that but also what I liked is I had a larger bead that I put um, some texture on and when it came out of the oven it was still warm I cut it so I would have some spacer beads I can use these for spacer beads on a necklace or whatever. So you can do that as well. You don't have to shape them like this at all, depending on what you want to do with them. If you want to use them for a necklace or if you want to use them for an earring or whatever. It, of course, that is, that's completely up to you. So um, I hope that was informative and, and helped you a little bit. I'm going to get some of this uglier clay out of here. Move this over here. Um, let's see. That is starting to shine up nicely. I'm gonna put a little more wax on it and I'm gonna run it through a couple more times so it, it'll shine like these. But once it once it's done, it will. It will sh be shiny just like that. Isn't that cute? Let me show you, let's see, these are about an inch and a quarter in diameter. So, um, but you can make smaller ones, you know. I have smaller ones. I got a whole plate of them here. Um, this is the next size down. And this, of course, this is the smallest. And they're all on, let's see. I got them all from here. Okay. 
So if you want to order the, the mold, it's uh, you can order it from Sculpey. And of course, there's other things you can do too. This is a donut, so you, you know you can make a donut with a hole in the middle. Um, teardrops, uh, you know, kind of a diamond or a pyramid-like shape. So, but I find I use these the most. Okay, okay, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed that for today and learned something new in regard to um, buffing and shining a bead with a little bit of wax. Um, and I hope you'll try it. I hope you'll try it. Maybe you can even try some wax from home. <laughs> Maybe that'll work too. I don't know. But I bought this many years ago and I've, I've barely used it at all. See, it really lasts a long time and I do not recall. It says here... Um, Looks like it came from the UK, unless I got it from a company here in the United States that carried it. And I'll let you just see that. www.plcreator.co.uk So that's it. Oh, you know what? One more thing before I go, let me just show you what came today. I'm so excited. Remember when I told you I ran out of granite clay and I ordered some? It came! I'm so excited. And it came from uh, Polyform Products in Elk Grove Village, Illinois. So if you want to look up uh, Polyform Products Company, Inc., you can go there and you can buy some of this granite clay. But guess what? When I was looking for this, guess what I saw? <laughs> Turquoise granite. Hey, isn't that pretty? That's just gorgeous. So I can't wait to try something with that. Now, this is the first time I have ordered clay in years because I have such a stock of clay, I didn't need to. But I, I was totally out of this, and it feels soft. That's good. This feels soft and pliable, too, so that's good. So they're both primo. Uh, they're not female. And I uh, can't wait to do something with those. Okay, that's it for today. Got to run. God bless you all. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.